I wanted to make a Christmas film about how we misjudge our family. And so this is the oral history of the hallmark of a real American family Christmas, which previously was called Expect Delays. So this movie is linked to the movie we made right before it, Belleville, through the character of Arlene. Arlene was our antagonist in Belleville, and we carried her character over into this world. We wanted to deepen her story and flesh out her story, and we definitely wanted to work with Cooper Shaw again. By the way, if you're in California, you need to take our acting classes because she's a great teacher. But anyway, this story came together about Arlene. It actually came from a very personal place for me. I had to dig deep and figure out how Alec had betrayed his friend Arlene in high school. And I recalled the worst thing I've ever done in my life which was one of my friends got pregnant as a teenager and I was a little judgmental religious jerk in high school and I wrote her a condemning letter um, and it was the most hurtful thing I've ever done and I apologized uh, within a year of that happening so it's decades in the past but I'll obviously never forget wronging somebody in that way and a writer uses his own life so I worked that into expect delays and basically the story that you hear in this restaurant scene between Alec and Arlene uh, is ripped from the headlines it's ripped right from my own life um, this story was also about how Alec prejudges his family and it's so easy to tell a movie where you just kind of ridicule the parents for their ways. And I thought, what if we flipped that upside down and realized that um, we hadn't allowed them the opportunity to evolve from who they were as well. That life doesn't freeze. When you leave town for another city, your family, their lives still go on. So this was kind of, um, in many ways, a traditional Christmas movie, but hopefully with some darker themes running throughout it. So it wouldn't be a sappy movie. Um, even though it has the word Hallmark in the title now, it is certainly not a Hallmark Christmas film. We had a great cast in addition to Ted and Cooper. Um, the matriarch and patriarch of the family were Wayne and Andra. And um, they found out as actors that they had one really big thing in common. How are you guys similar, and how is it different than your normal lives? Well, I think we're both from East Texas originally. Yeah, we, we grew discovered up within that just like we grew 20 up miles 30 from each other, miles from each yeah. other when yeah. we were children. Yeah, we yeah. found that on the set. It was set. amazing. I had four adult children. Uh, in addition to Alec, there were three more. One was Wendy Shapiro, who had been my roommate in L.A., and she was able to nail the pathos of Leanne and switch effortlessly between comedy and drama, which you completely see in this meltdown scene, which we used in the trailer. Oh dear, that's unfortunate. <laughs> this movie is once again the second holiday film where I have juxtaposed tensions and real life hurts that bump up against the most wonderful time of the year. I had already done that with the unattainably perfect gay Christmas aka Red Lodge and this was the second time I was sort of doing that there's just something so delicious about um, rubbing tension up against a time that's supposed to be perfect other family members were uh, Keith Nussbaum and Jessica Ambule playing the yuppie couple oh, it's very it, natural yeah I yeah mean, sure I'm, I'm like that all the time <laughs> right. I mean. The story with Jessica is that she had auditioned for Belleville and didn't get the role, but she continued to bring us food on set and take set photography. I just couldn't believe the level of support she was giving us, and I knew immediately I wanted her to play a supporting role in this Christmas movie. And then she was so great as Amber in this movie that she went on to be the lead in the next movie we would make next year. Um, so that's my history with Jessica. And then, of course, she would become uh, one of my best friends and really like family. Marjorie Handy also gelled so well with Antonio as mother and son. We've made a friendship together that's just like, I text her all the time, I say, hey mom, yep. how's it going? She says, son, it's going good, so I'm so glad. I love that they're still texting each other, that makes me so happy. John Lanius played one of the more hippie sons, uh, he brought his own prayer beads. William Conklin 
played Uncle Heath. And Uncle Heath was an important character to me because uncles are always the creeps in media. And I wanted an uncle who reflected my uncles and the uncle that I've always tried to be to my nieces and nephews. So this very important scene we shot on a hot day. I know it looks like winter because Rachel Farrell did such a great job frosting those windows and making it look like winter. We shot this on day one and we were already in tears as Bill Conklin delivered the speech with Alec, which again was sort of ripped from my life and a conversation I'd had with my uncle and how he saw me. And so, yeah, I teared up during that scene. Stephen Foster had been in Hidden Hills out in LA and we knew we had to fly him here to play an elf who has a flask and talks to Alec, and it wasn't just a comedic role. Uh, Stephen's part, which we only shot in one afternoon, basically was the moral center of Alec's story. I mean, he gives him clarity, and it was such an important role. So I thank Stephen so much for coming in and nailing that. Another thing that made this all in the family is that my actual nieces came to be in this movie. Um, Ava played the granddaughter in the movie, and um, then, Fortunately, her little sister Sadie watched her perform, and even though she was only three or four, I had no idea if she was going to come through and um, be able to pull off. You know, that's a very young age, and I think she wanted to be good like her older sister. And so in this airport scene where she is the cutest thing on earth, she was totally locked in in, in this scene where she conversed with Nicholas. All the cast really came together as a family. I know that sounds like a cliche, but they loved like a family, and some of them even fought like a family, well, at least two of them. Um, so it was, uh, it was a great shoot, and by the end, we were all ice skating in Webster Groves, and what a time we had out on the ice. And um, some people could skate, some couldn't, but... Um, you know, the love you see at the end of that movie was really genuine between the actors. Albert James Medino from Carbondale provided the sort of electronic Christmas score for the closing credits. Jeffrey Birch, as always. I love that he took some familiar Christmas songs in the scoring of this film and put some of them in like minor keys and um, put a real um, sort of ethereal and darker twist to some of the music. We had an associate producer on the movie, Yvette Holmes. Um, William was a PA, and later he would become sound. Um, Johnny came in, Johnny Kubelka came in from LA to do our sound. All of us crew members stayed within the house. Obviously, Brett was there doing cinematography. Um, it was a big house, and uh, the crew guys all had the basement. Rachel Farrell was our set designer. Dan always has a very detailed script, and I make sure that we get every detail. So in the uh, airport scene, I made sure we made it look like an airport, even though it was in the middle of a school. So, uh, so that is it's bringing the vision to life. Logan Short worked on the movie uh, on the crew, but he was also an actor in one of the most. Um, quiet scenes in the movie inside the airport is this connection between these two guys in the airport which is another story based on my real life I guess I poured a lot of my real life into this movie which is why maybe I love it so much because it means so much to me but I had a night in New York City that felt like a movie in in my late 20s where my plane was to fly out at 5 a.m. I checked out of the hotel I had my suitcase with me all I could do in the middle of the night was go to bars, and I asked a bar to put my suitcase behind the bar. And then I had this connection with a guy that went on for hours. It was like amazing, it was out of a movie, but then it all had to end. I had to leave to get on a plane. So I really use that as inspiration for this scene where these two guys just really have a connection in the airport. And um, that was, again, Logan, who played one of the characters, and then the grandson of the movie, played by Nicholas. Nicholas uh, in the movie is a young college age student and he has a great dorm room scene that we shot um, with uh, Kate Barton. So yeah, we filmed together in the Lindenwood dorms. We were college students, so it was kind of fun to go back to college and, yeah. and oh, it was yeah. cute because we wore our like, matching Converse tennis shoes and like it was, yeah. it was a lot of fun. Sips and Splatters is a business in town. 
uh, that provided all these Christmas paintings that we hung up all over the house to make it look like these were the paintings that Barb had done for her own house. I thought it was pretty cool to have your artwork in a movie. Oh, Absolutely, we were, we were yeah. So excited we're super to see excited. It. We yeah. can't wait to see the whole movie put yeah. together. It was a family affair on the red carpet as well, which was a very cold night. Um, Ted's mom showed up, Jolene. I am very proud of him. Very, very proud. Dan said that he had a part written for me, so I said, hey, that sounds cool. I'll do that. <laughs> I do want to thank Dan Cross and Kathy Sachs for all that red carpet photography in the freezing cold and all those great interviews they did on the red carpet. Kathy Kaiser was out there um, doing, also doing interviews, and we appreciate that. We screened a few times at the St. Paul United Church of Christ, where we'd filmed a little bit in the movie. And uh, we had done a lot of promotion on this movie. Jessica and I had gone on a lot of TV, like stltv.net and NBC Channel 5. Um, the actors really helped market the movie, like Jody Stockton and Ariel and Jessica. We would market it in the summer. Of course, if you notice carefully, you'll see that Amy Grant's Christmas record is playing in the back, which was getting us in the mood for promoting a holiday film. After the theatrical run, we actually got a TV distribution deal in Europe on True Entertainment, which was really cool to have our movie playing on TV over there. For some reason, my films have done better overseas than they ever play here in the United States. Maybe at heart, I'm British. Streetscape Magazine, um, I love the article title that Hollywood comes to middle America with the premiere of a Christmas movie. They did a really fun shoot at Ronnie's Theater with Ted Trent and Cooper Shaw. Influx gave us such a great review. Bethany Rose really understood my writing and my intention on such a deep level that I ended up using her quote on the poster. Visions Magazine did a really cool photo shoot in the summertime with our actors, um, which is why they're able to be in short sleeves, but then they gave them these headdresses that um, Shattered Dreams Photography had created, and then they photoshopped in snow on the grass and um, in the sky, and it just ended up being a really artsy, fun shoot that everybody participated on a rather hot summer day. So I did end up also screening this movie at a theater in Florida so that my nieces could bring their friends so they could see their big moment on the big screen. Those are my reflections on Expect Delays, which is now called The Hallmark of a Real American Family Christmas on Amazon Prime, and I hope you've had a chance to see it. If you find the movie to be more personal, it's because it came from a very personal place.